Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This video will be the start of a new series for advanced RAG tutorials. Today our focus will be on source handling. The objective is to build a RAG chain, capable of pointing to the exact source of information for each statement it makes based on our data. As you can see this is a part 1, in which we will build a simple version of this RAG chain. Part 2 will be dedicated to a more advanced way of handling and showing sources. So without further ado, let's start by installing the necessary packages. We will need the unstructured client package for OCR and data processing, Langchain OpenAI for deploying a local embedding model, Langchain AWS for invoking a bedrock LLM, and Langchain Quadrant for storing and retrieving vectors. For the models, we deploy our own embedding model locally, using LM Studio and the Langchain OpenAI package. Today we're using the powerful BGE version 1.5 model. For more on deploying embedding models with LM Studio, you can check out our recent tutorial on the subject. Now for the LLM, we will first need to load our AWS credentials, exactly as we did in the previous Bedrock tutorial. We then simply use the Langchain AWS package to call the latest Llama 3.3 model through Amazon Bedrock using our credentials. Finally, we close this preparation phase by disabling unnecessary logging to keep our notebook clean and readable. Let's now move on to the data preparation section. In this second phase, we will take a few sample documents, use OCR and layout analysis techniques to process and chunk them into paragraphs, and finally vectorize the paragraphs using our embedding model. The sample documents will be Wikipedia articles downloaded as PDF files. They contain extensive information on three different companies, namely, BNP, STM, and Palantir. To perform OCR and chunking on these documents, we first need to set up our unstructured client. If this is your first encounter with unstructured, you can check out our complete tutorial which covers the unstructured serverless API, how to use it, and how to acquire an API key. So we first start by defining the client, using our loaded credentials and the API URL. We then define our processing function, which takes as input the file path of the document we want to process. The function first opens the file to read its contents. It then defines a set of parameters for the unstructured API. In our case, we set the language to English and choose by title as our chunking strategy. With this option, unstructured will use layout analysis to approximately detect the beginning and end of each section and subsection in the document. It then chunks the text into paragraphs respecting this detected structure. We also set multi-page sections to true, allowing unstructured to join sentences from different pages in case some section was interrupted by a page break. Finally, the function sends our request to the API and parses the response into a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary contains the text of a chunk, as well as the relevant metadata for the chunk. We also define a quick printing function which will show a few random chunks from the output. Let's now process and visualize our three sample documents using these functions. So we first process the BNP document by specifying its file path, and we use our printing function to show a few random chunks from it. Here's what the chunks look like. So here we have chunk number 23, chunk number 47, and so on and so forth. We do the same for ST Microelectronics, and again for Palantir Technologies. Let's now vectorize our process documents. As usual, we start by setting up our Quadrant client. We set the vector size to 1024 for our BGE embedding model and set the distance metric to cosine. Finally, we initialize our vector store in dense retrieval mode. Again, we define our vectorization function. This function iterates over the document chunks and stores the text and metadata of each chunk in a Langchain document object. These objects are all stored in a list along with unique IDs. Finally, we upsert all of them to Quadrant using the add documents method and print a message showing the number of vectorized chunks. Now you might be curious what this metadata actually looks like. Well, it depends on how you choose to set it up while processing the documents. In our case, we simply take the metadata generated by unstructured for each chunk. Let's print an example to see what it looks like. So this is the first chunk of this document. You can see it contains several details such as the file type, the language, and so on. Most importantly, it contains the page number, which will be crucial for our source handling, as well as the file name. We'll see in part 2 of this tutorial, 
How to include even more interesting metadata for more precise and professional sourcing. Okay, let's now vectorize our document chunks. Again, we vectorize our three sample documents one by one. We can see it successfully vectorized 66 vectors for the BNP document, 60 for STM, and 127 for Palantir. Now that we have our documents processed and vectorized, we can start building our RAG pipeline. You can see it has the classic three steps of retrieving, augmenting, and then generating, except that we're adding a fourth step here, the sourcing step. Since it comes after generation, you can think of it as a post-processing step. You'll see that the most important part in this process will be the augmenting step, as it prepares and injects the data in a way that makes sourcing pretty straightforward. So let's start with the retrieval step. As usual, we simply take our vector store and use the as retriever method while specifying our top K for retrieval. We then include it into a retriever runnable, which keeps the query as is using a runnable pass through and gets the relevant documents based on the query using our retriever. This whole dictionary containing both the initial query and the retrieved documents will be passed on to the next step of the process. Let's see what happens in the augmenting phase. We have this augment context function, which takes as input the dictionary that we just saw. So it has the query and the retrieved docs, and the goal is to return the context as well as a source mapping. Normally we would just stuff all the retrieved chunks into the context. Here we actually loop over the retrieved chunks, and for each chunk, we associate a number to the chunk, save that in our source mapping with the metadata, and then add the numbered chunk to the context. The first chunk is added as snippet number one with the associated text. Then we have snippet number two and so on. We add a special end of snippet tag to signal that this is the end of the chunk. So what we end up having here is the initial query, the context containing separated numbered snippets and this sourcing dictionary, which maps each number to the original chunk with its metadata. And this is what we feed into the next step. And since this is a custom function, we simply use the runnable lambda to turn it into a Langchain runnable. Okay, now we can move on to the generation phase. You can see we have a pretty large prompt with detailed instructions, which we will give to the LLM. We start by defining the task as data-based question answering. We tell the model to only answer based on our data and to always refer to the origin of the information used to answer the question. The origin will be the context snippets we insert into the prompt, which is why we insist on the data-based aspect. We then explain how the data will be provided to the model, outlining the exact format for each chunk, with the number, then the text, then the end of snippet tag. And this is the main instruction. Whenever the model uses a snippet to answer a question, it must refer to the snippet number, and it must do it in a specific recognizable format, which we will later parse using regex. We also give a few examples to reinforce our prompt, showing the model what we expect as a response in different situations. Finally, if the model can't answer the question from the provided data, we instruct it to simply say, I don't have enough information. We put all of these instructions in the system prompt and use the user prompt to insert our question and formatted context. We put all of this into a chat prompt template using the ddent function from TextWrap to remove all unnecessary spaces caused by line breaks. And as usual, we create our generation runnable with the simple prompt model parser structure. Let's now build our RAG chain. Using the LCEL logic, we simply pipe together our retriever, augmenter, and generator runnables. Let's test it out on a sample query. For example, when was BNP founded? You can see that it gives us the answer, just like a normal RAG chain. The difference here though, is that it also references the snippet numbers where the information came from, and it does it in the specific format we instructed. Now the goal of the next part, will be to use these numbers to find the original source and its metadata, and display them in a more meaningful way. Okay, let's get started with the final component, the source runnable. We first create a function to prettify the sourced answer. To do that, we're gonna use superscripts, just like in articles, academic papers, books, and so on. We define a function to convert integers into their superscript form, and a function to do the reverse. And here we define our main prettifying function. This function does two important things. First, it detects all snippet numbers in the answer using this regex pattern and replaces them with superscripts. And second, it maintains logical counting order for superscripts starting from one instead of the scrambled snippet numbers. 
and of course it keeps a separate dictionary, storing the relationship between the superscripts and the original snippet numbers. Let's now see how we're gonna use this function to build our source runnable. We create a new function called show source. This function takes as input a dictionary containing the rag answer, just like the one we just saw, and the sourcing dictionary. If you remember from the augmenter step, this sourcing dictionary stores the relationship between the snippet numbers and the chunk metadata. We use our prettify function to replace snippet numbers with superscripts, so we get the pretty answer along with the dictionary mapping the superscripts to the snippet numbers. Now we have a mapping to go from superscript to snippet number, and another mapping to go from snippet number to chunk metadata. We use this double mapping to add a source section to our answer, just like footnotes you find at the bottom of a page. The body of the answer will have superscripts, and the footnotes will match each superscript with the corresponding document and page number using the chunk metadata. Finally, we put this function inside a runnable lambda, and this gives us our source runnable. Let's now create our final sourced rag chain. Just like the normal rag chain, we start by piping the retriever runnable, followed by the augmenter runnable. Now remember our source function needs to get both, the answer, which comes from the generator runnable, and the sourcing dictionary, which comes from the augmenter runnable. To pass both these elements along, we use the runnable pass-through with the assign method. The runnable pass-through, as the name indicates, will pass along everything that is received at its entry. In this case, it will pass along the outputs from the augmenter runnable, among which is the sourcing dictionary. The assign method on the other hand, will take the output from the generator runnable, store it in a variable called answer, and add it to the dictionary passed along by the runnable pass-through. As a result of that, we end up with a dictionary, containing both the answer from the generator runnable, and the sourcing from the augmenter runnable. Finally, we pipe this to our source runnable, and obtain a complete sourced rag chain. Let's now test our final chain on a few examples to see what it does. As a first example, let's ask, when and how was ST Microelectronics founded? And this is the final answer we get from the sourced rag chain. We have the answer to our question, which is 1987, but we also have a source with this superscript number one. It refers to our ST Microelectronics PDF file, and specifically on page one. Let's take a look at the file. Indeed, we can find the answer on the first page of the mentioned file. Okay, if we go back to our answer, we can see it mentions some other important facts. The company was founded as a result of a merger. Its name was originally SGS Thompson, and its CEO was Pasquale Pistorio. We have superscript number three here, which refers to the same document on page two. Let's take a look again, and indeed, we can find a paragraph with the mentioned information on page two of the document. Let's try with a different question. Here we ask, what are the major products of Palantir Technologies? And this is the answer that we get. It mentions a few Palantir products, with a first source referencing page 2 of the Palantir document. Let's take a look. Okay, so in the second page of this document, we indeed find a list of major Palantir products. What else do we have here? It mentions another product called Palantir Metropolis, with a source referencing page 7 of the same document. Let's go to page 7. Perfect. As expected, we find the paragraph talking about the Metropolis product. And that's it for this first part of our source handling tutorial. In the next video, we will go a bit further and try to get geometric sources. In other words, sources that can point to a specific paragraph with coordinates which can be used for underlining or even highlighting. If you appreciate the content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.